and some administration. That's a formality. Wardy, Daniel Ward. Everyone knows Source. Everyone knows Source. How are you, mate? Source, are we, have I got you there? I'm going to try to chuck him on. This may or may not. Oh, there he is. Hello, Daniel. Hello, Hello Russell. Russell. How are you, mate? <laughs> Still haven't shaved. <laughs> nah, Max Gorn inspired me, mate. I'm going to run with it for a little bit. <laughs> it's good on you, mate. Mate, we've got some people jumped on, and it's just been some really committed people that jumped on this show every single week, and they've been chatting. and And this was the feeling, and you've you've seen the show, Wardy, and and it yeah. was about getting our people together, wasn't it? Like we couldn't get together, but we needed to. Uh, we needed to after that Geelong game, where we kicked a goal after the siren. Well, we didn't. Max did. Uh, there was this dead feeling, wasn't there? How did you feel after that game where you had to turn the TV off and go back to your family and, and go basically go to bed? Oh, I love my family, Russell. You know that. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, it's start, <laughs> starting to wear thin watching uh, games of footy. Yeah, I, I think you grow up watching footy with your mates. It, it actually has been a positive experience with the kids in particular that they've, um, you know, they've been really throwing themselves into it and, yelling at the TV and and very excited. So I'm a great believer everything happens for a reason. It, it's um you would have loved to have been there and um but the ability to be pretty close with your kids and watch that at home has been one positive to take out of it. There was genuine, genuine joy amongst all us past players, wasn't there, mate? I mean, let's talk about that first. The and everyone knows about the WhatsApp room. It's been quite widely heralded amongst all our media outlets that the M- MFC have got lots of WhatsApp groups. Neil Dan Hur's in one. Rod Grinder's been amazing. It has been uh, therapy for us, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. It's um, because you don't know behind that who's uh, who needs to um, jump on there because they've had a rough day, or you know, everyone's in different situations. So uh, it's been fantastic. Obviously, more jump on it than others, but. You know, for those people that um, <clears throat> it's given a bit of an outlet, obviously you can't go out and um, um, spend time with your mates. So, yeah, it was fantastic. So they know the first call I got was from you and then that sort of verged me to to jump on and and ring six or seven of the boys yeah. that we played footy with that were close. And, yeah, it was fantastic. Mate, uh, the next part of it is is obviously – being a past player, and I've had twinges of this, and I'm, I'm honest, honest truth here. Knowing that we went through all of that together, and we had an opportunity in 2000 to bring that joy to the Melbourne Football Club, was there ever a moment where you sat back and thought, "Wow, I just would have loved to have done that," and also celebrated like, like the boys are celebrating in the uh, in the in the little snippets we see on Facebook at the moment? Was there a twinge of just a little bit of jealousy? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely not. Not in a native way, more shit. That would have been great, and I think everyone that plays league footy—that's what they talk about—is is playing in the flag, and um, yeah, it would have been. Um, but the type of footy, the type of footy that they played Saturday night, in particular, the last quarter and a half, we weren't that good, mate. I like to think that we were, but um, we didn't play that brand of footy. So, <sighs> you know, it's a full full credit to those boys that um, you know have put in the work and and to. To win a to win a grand final like that in the end was just mm. um, one of the best wins I've ever seen in my lifetime. Woody, can you send a shout out to Kimberly Crussell? You know Kimberly; she's been a long time supporter of the club and a volunteer. Say good day, Kim. Good day, Kim. How are you? Uh, and that, and this has been the great thing. You know, I rang my player sponsor that that before me sponsored Brett Lovett, and think after me sponsored a few players as well. So this is. You know, these are people who have had 30, 40, 50 years of uh, contribution to the Melbourne Football Club along with supporters. And, you know, I, I felt a little bit different. It was it was a strange feeling. I was wrapped. Um, but there is a lot of people that, you know, have been through a lot more than what I had as a player mm-hmm. and been through the ups and downs, whether it's a longer period or had a um, tougher sort of connection with the footy club. So... Yeah, uh, I'm really happy for those people as well. I'll get your rundown of the game uh, in a second, mate, because well, there was a lot to it, wasn't there? So we can't go on all night about it, but uh, to get your footy head on it. Um, the 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 team that we've got at the moment, a couple of people that I've seen in the streets on my walk and a couple of phone calls and messages, 
how are we going to? I think people have just realized all of a sudden because they've had to watch Melbourne because they're in a grand final. <laughs> they've had to watch them because they were in a prelim. They've realized all of a sudden how chock full, what we've known all year, how chock full a talent this team is. It's going to be bloody hard to keep a hold of them, isn't it? Yeah. And, and a lot of the credit needs to go to the list managers and the recruiting over the last two or three years. Um, you know, obviously in the past we got that, I wouldn't say wrong, but we we had some holes in those areas. And, you know, key areas of the football club that you build your list from. And and that was probably why, you know, the, the fan base and players wanted more from the footy club because we yeah. probably thought that we had enough talent. Yeah. Um, and you could see that the effort was there. There was just it just all needed to click and yeah. Um, you know, you you'd hope and and the story that I'm selling to my kids is that geez, the way they played in their age demographic, you'd hope that, you know, we'd be back there this time next year in Melbourne anyway. So yeah. um you don't take anything for granted, but um, you know, the type of footy that they played and the age and games experience, you'd, you'd think that they only keep improving. I've got some messages coming through, mate, about Christian Petrarca and those few minutes of the third quarter were some of the most special minutes of football that they've ever seen or experienced. We got it right in 2014 when we drafted that kid, uh, Christian Petrarca. We got it right when Max Gorn rolled into the club. We got it right when Clary Oliver. We got it right for a long time. For a long time before that, we weren't getting it right or we were making some bad decisions in terms of a club setup. It's just been, and this has been my reflection, and I'll get to the question, but my reflection has been that the club has, in a linear sense, systematically set ourselves up for success. It hasn't been a real rush for it. There's lessons learned from a, an era before where we rushed for things, where we didn't set things up right, where we got it wrong and learnt from mistakes. This linear sort of move towards a premiership has been really calculated, really steady on the back of a lot of support and a lot of help from people like Jackson Ruse and onwards and onwards and you get your supporter groups that have always put in and things like that. Great coaches come into the club. Um, you would love to be a part of that club set, out, set up now, wouldn't you, mate? Yeah, absolutely, and it's a great point. That one person's not going to make a difference. My one person coming on board isn't going to make a difference. Like I said before, the way that they've set up uh, their list strategy, um, obviously Adam Uze, Choco Williams uh, coming on board with the footy club. You know, at board level, they're they're quite um, you know on the same page. Brad Green. Uh, getting involved from a football perspective on the board as well. So I, I think I think just to simplify it and say one person coming on board, but I think, you know, Goody always had the attributes to be a good co uh, coach. The players had, you know, key attributes. Mm. But we've actually surrounded them with people that can mm. help them grow. And Christian Petrarca just looks like someone who's on top of the world and has that much confidence in his own ability that he can just go and play and, I think for him, he's, he's probably like a Dustin Martin where he, he's a mid-forward and he pushes forward. But, you know, and that was a thing with Richmond for a long time. It was Dustin Martin kicked the goals and did all that, but there was other mids and, and wingmen playing their role to, to, to let Dustin Martin do that. And I see that with yeah. Melbourne at the moment with Petrarca. So, yeah, I want to... Um... Yeah, I want to go to a couple of these questions that are coming through for you, mate, um, for me and you. Uh, go, I'll, I'll try to wind the messages back. Hello, friendy. He, glad to hear from you. Um, can I get back in the messages here just a little bit further down? There was one that I like. Well, the first question was, what's Wardy up to now uh, and and how's things going? Yeah, so twofold. So I work in the sales industry, um, so... Uh, enjoy that, generally out on the road, but at the moment working from home. Um, but the main, you know, hopefully my bosses uh, aren't seeing this, but the main, my main passion is coaching and I coach local footy. I uh, coach Old Halebury in the, in the amateurs uh, in B grade. So um, we've obviously had a um, last couple of years affected by COVID uh, this year. We're sitting pretty at nine and two, I think, and looking like having a decent final series and hoping to get up to A grade and didn't happen. So, um, yeah, that's something that I throw my time into and I really love. 
Yeah, good on you, mate. A um, couple of questions here. How good was Sparrow's uh, third quarter, I think it was, in the message? Sparrow was pretty special. In, a young man out there in the, on the big stage, mate. It wasn't just him, though, was it, in terms of young fellas? Jackson, Rivers, they look like they've been doing this for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. It, and I think that's a little thing with, you know, I did a, haven't had as much media as you have, uh, mate, in the last week, but uh, I did have one. Uh, conversation with a journalist that asked what the 2,000 um, sort of members of that team were doing now. And and I spoke about when I played now, GF, in, in 2000, that I was 23. Um, I only played, it was my 29th game, I think. So you probably don't realise the enormity until you're yeah. a bit later on in your career that she, I, need, I need to really do well here because I'm coming to the end or... You know, this is kind of a big deal. When you're at that age, you know, Sparrow's probably played anywhere between 20 to 30 games. So I yeah. think I think he just looks like someone that's um, that's uh, just going out to enjoy his footy and, and, and that's showing out with a lot of our young players. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Hey, um, obviously, the midfield has been spoken about a lot. They're, they're beasts in there. They're phenomenal. But there's the outside guys. I think there was a post that I read about, and you'll really love this, and I really wanted to ask you this question because this is the position you played on the halfback flank. As one of those connecting players using your pace, Salem hasn't got as much pace as probably you had, but his ability to hit a target is phenomenal. And he was running at around about 92% accuracy in a grand final, I might add, which is one of the high-pressure games, obviously. So you would have been impressed with that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a great point about Salem in particular. Uh, yeah, he might know my pace, but he's a far better player than I was. He, he, His ability to use the ball, you saw it with Caleb Daniel in the first half for the Bulldogs, that uh, he helped set them up and kept them, you know, sort of in front. Um, you know, Salem doesn't waste a footy. Um, and again, you know, it looks like the back six or seven play a collective role. You know, Petty, Petty locks down to help May and Lever uh, come off and support. And it looks like, you know, others, whether it's Rivers or, or Bowie or Hibbard, you know, play a role to allow Salem to play high and, and, uh, and use his skills as well. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, the future looks bright. You, you can have all the talent in the world, and that's probably been the case in the last two or three years. But they've actually bought into a system and a way mm. of playing, mm. whether you call it the Richmond way from years gone by or um, or they've come up with their own sort of spin on that. But um, the the main part is, is they play for each other and they're selfless. I, I probably want to mention Angus Brasher in that role. Mm. He can go and... Uh, play midfield, and he did it, finished third in the Brownlow. Um, but for the good of the team, obviously, with Petrarca and Oliver and Vine in there, we needed someone to play, you know, like a Camden McIntosh role for Richmond, work mm. up and down, connect, yeah. Yeah. get your 15 touches a game. You know, you're not getting a lot of Brownlow votes, but you're, you're very important. And mm. I'm a great believer when you do all the hard work like he has throughout the year, you get the rewards, and mm. he was in our top four or five uh, in a GF um, third quarter in particular, I, I thought he he helped uh, get us in front for sure. Angus Brayshaw, so I, I thought that was really important. Yeah, I agree. Angus has uh, he's had. I reckon he's been the one that has probably been maligned. You know, the supporters and and people have said of him, you know, he needs to get more of the ball, or he's not as dynamic as a Petrarca. But I've been saying all year, Ed and Angus have been really balanced on their wings. And they've also been able to create create great disruption. Angus is taller than what you think. He's taller than me. I'm six foot. So he'd be six one, six two. Okay, solid. And he gets into that drifting back wingman role, doesn't he, into the back line and 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 wins a lot of ball. Uh, and when he's not in there, our halfbacks are looking up and they're seeing really balanced wingers. Okay, and they've got great connection through players like Salem. Rivers has been great back there. I mean, they've all been fantastic back there. The back line is, uh, as a whole, mate, because you spent most of your career in the back line, I want to get your summation of their grand final day. Yeah, uh, fantastic. Obviously, under the pump, it was coming in pretty quick in the second quarter. Hmm. Um, but that's why that's why midfield so important and winning the centre square clearance you know, at every, any level of footy, even where I coach. And, um, 
you know, so Luke Jackson, when he went in there, um, you know, into the third um, with Oliver, Viney and Petrarca had a great impact because obviously that's that's creating less entries for the defenders to um, mm. defend against. I think, mm. you know, you mentioned Langdon and Brayshaw will play a great role in getting back to help out and outnumber um, the opposition forwards. So mm. although the backs have done a great job, it's a lot easier if it's seven on two or three than, you know, even numbers to to stop them from marking the ball. So, mm. Mm. Um, you know, I think in the end, inside 50 marks for the game was maybe 16 or 17 for Melbourne and maybe four or five for the Bulldogs. So yeah. that says a lot that, you know, obviously you get more shots on goal and more opportunities to score. And, um, yeah, I, I, I've been super impressed with the back line. Obviously, yeah. you know, we paid a fair bit to get Lever and, and May there, mm. but we've been able to build around that. And, um, you know, they'll be pillars for a long time. Petty come in and replaced Tomlinson and mm. did a good job. And then young Bowie in the end um, probably kept uh, or hibbered out initially, but, uh, two or three others. Hunt, um, you know. Jaden Hunt, yeah, correct, who I'm actually a really big fan of. I thought that mm. he had a great year until he got injured. Um, yeah. You know, he's someone that the, the man on the mark rule and all that, it actually helps him to run, carry, bounce. Mm. Um, you know, I, I think he's someone that can help us again next year for sure. I think the thing that surprised me the most and it's not well, not necessarily me because I was there all year okay I was there in the early games worked the games obviously I still work for the club I'm out in the MCG and you see it and you hear it and you feel it when you're there at the G it's tangible you see these guys like you mentioned before they've got a a, a love for each other they've got a really great culture uh, but for everybody else they they they're looking at this team now and I think they're a little bit blown away this is a team that rivals those Hawthorne I mean, if we were to play that really awesome Hawthorne team, it would have been an amazing game in a grand final because I reckon that team there, that back line you're talking about stacks up in any era over the last 10, 15 years. Yeah, absolutely. And and I suppose I'm, I'm not going to tell. Uh, obviously, we're, we're doing well at the footy club. I'm not going to tell the footy club how they're playing for the next three or four years. But for me, it would be that sustained success so the reason why I wouldn't put them anywhere near Hawthorns or uh, Brisbane's of that era was that they did it year upon year. Um, yes. You know, our best footy, fantastic, you know, this year, and you win a GF by, you know, 74 points. That's a great effort. Mm. Um, but, you know, it's it, it can't be a flash in a pan either. So I think over pre-season – that would be uh, what they're sort of planning towards to back that up and and keep getting that respect because now they're going to get they're going to get the best shot of uh, everyone in the comp because that that's what happens when you're the champ. So yeah, yeah. Um, you know it's great, um, you know fantastic for sure. Yeah. Um, but they need to build that because you would have thought when Essendon smashed us in that grand final that they would go on to win three, four, five flags. They yeah. won one. So yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I think it it would be something to, to look back on in two, three, four years' time and go, right, how many did we win there? Because that's what yeah. Richmond did and Hawthorne and Brisbane. It feels like there's a, a great sense of that there, though, at the moment, which gives me comfort. It feels like there's a great sense of you need to evolve, you need to be like water, you need to keep being fluid. You know, you hear this... Uh, all these uh, phrases and sayings that sort of make you go, wow, you know, that's great. It's a great look. That's a great take. You know, you've got great trust in the coaching staff, I think, at the moment, don't you? I mean, having trust gives you confidence, all right? If you have trust in your coaching staff, you have trust in your club, you're having trust in your administration, you have trust in your supporters, your sponsors, you know everything's set up for you, then all you're left to do is show up and ply your craft. And it feels like that these players have got that trust because of everything else that's going on in the background. Some of the stuff that we didn't quite have when we were asked to bring our own bags of ice to training because that would be supplied and then would get a message like, we'll let you know where training is. We haven't got a venue yet. That sort of stuff sort of hurts the trust a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I want to talk to you quickly about the coaching staff too because you being a coach um, – and there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, comments going on here, Wardy. You might I don't know if you can see them or not. No, you can't. But uh, um, I can see. Yeah. 
you can see them. You know, there's some really great comments about what we're talking about and, and love how everyone's just replying to each other. Uh, that's why Robbo's coach and Robbo's a fan. Get F'd whoever wrote that. I can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Edwards, you can get stuffed. Uh, can Griffiths keep Burjo's winning for... Oh, that jumped away from me. Sorry. Uh, anyway, I'll move back to the question. You, yeah. You, so the question was around the coaching. coaching. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, I think what they do is they... And look, I, you know, you're, you're more in the inner sanctum than me. Um but obviously with our connection with Adam Uzo and there's some things that get back and it, and it looks as though they've got, they've got the right balance. So, yeah. you know, um, from afar, it looks as though Choco Williams has a great relationship that he's built with players that he can give them a serve if he needs to, or a little pep up or a pat on the backside yeah. because he's built that rapport. Yeah. And I think it looks like the same thing with, with Simon Goodwin and, and Ooze and Troy Chaplin and mm. Greg Stafford and the rest of the coaches, it looks as though um, the players know that they've got their backs and they're always in their corner. Yeah. Um, and, and they can just go play. You said it perfectly yourself before that. They're not thinking anything else than just going and playing. And from the mm. moment you from the moment you grow up playing footy, and I look back on my career. If there was things that you're worried about or there was 15 things that you're trying to do in a game, you wouldn't play well. Footy's a game mm. that you play, you know, maybe instinct. one or two things in your head, it's all on instinct. You know, mm. you, you, mm. when you play those, the ball's there, you just jump up and go and catch yeah. it and sit on yeah. someone's head. Yeah. That yeah. When, you, when you're in that zone, that look, you talk about your Petrarcas and Max Gorn in the, in the prelim, it just looked like they were in a zone where it was like, how did that happen? Well... It just, there's nothing else that they have to worry about. There's no problems at board level or this coach doesn't rate mm. me or am yeah. I going to get dropped next week or whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm. They've built that to to show those boys that we've got your back. You know, there was hardly any changes. But once mm. you're in, you're playing mm. good footy, yeah. you're not coming out, go and play. And I reckon even the Jake Bowie who's played seven games, it just looked like mm. once he was in and they were happy with him, way you go, go and play. Yeah. So yeah, they've done a great job. 100%. Well said. Yeah. Um, look, I, I want to get your um, take on the game again before I let you go. And we'll talk about the game just quickly because um, it's it's just something that was just, it, it, we're in awe of the way they played. It was awesome. And I've yeah. watched it two or three times now. Um, and and there's just little things that I'm picking out of it. There's little plays that I'm picking out of it and going, I didn't see that before. That was awesome. You know, someone did something there that was a block that allowed this to happen. But it all started in that third quarter. And the first, let's be honest, the yeah. first was great. The yeah. second was we have a look at it. Then we call it the premiership season, uh, uh, quarter for a reason. You adjust and you make your moves and then you go and it's foot down and into the last quarter. So, man, that's a really broad stroke of what the game was. For you, talk to me about individual things through the game that you saw that you loved. Yeah, I, I just saw and... From a coaching perspective, I saw some subtle changes at half time. Obviously, second quarter, Bonton Pally was pushing forward, and uh, ta- and it looked like his matchup was Jack Viney, mm. and was taking him forward. Now, obviously, you know Jack's a warrior and he's a hard contested ball, and I love the way he goes about it. Mm. But that's not his one word defending. You know, marks inside defensive fifties, so it looked like. Um, you know, that we reset at half time and, you know, it looked like Oliver went to him, um, mm. you know, not a tag, but once Bonson Pally got forward of centre, mm. um, you know, Oliver was, wasn't was far away and I think he stuck a couple of tackles uh, late in the third when Bont looked like he was going to get clear. Mm. And, and, and that shows, not to say that Clayton Oliver was a selfish player when he first came to the football club because I don't think he was at all. But he's more selfless than what he was when he first came. And for him to, you know, be, what were we, eight, nine points down at half time, and it would have been easy for him to go out and go, I've got to, I've got to do it myself and go and win yeah. 20 possessions. Yeah. But to have that mindset that once the ball pushes forward into the ball box forward line, I'm going to be responsible for the bond. Yeah. Um, I thought was great growth. And, um, you know, and then, you know, Luke Jackson – Luke Jackson going in there late in the third. Mm, mm. And 
oh. he, he, he virtually become a, a fourth mid because um, once it hit the ground, he was involved. I think he set up. He was involved in two or three of those goals once the ball hit the ground out, out of the middle. And I think that eight, nine, ten-minute burst at the end of the third, that broke yeah. them because, yeah. you know, it was four goals of difference. All we had to mm-hmm. do was really kick the first one or two of the, the last and they were done. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I turned it on the other day, same as you, and just happened to be 19 points down halfway through the third quarter. And yeah, from there, yeah. to kick 100 points to seven is just Ugh. outrageous. So Mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. To do it in a grand final too, you know, yeah. where you could be excused in the last quarter to, to just take the foot off the pedal, but there were still efforts towards the end that were saying, no, this is our brand. This is what we're all about. And... I think it does send a message. You said at the uh, start of this interview, you know, or towards the middle of this interview, I think it was about the the fact that we've got a bit of a, um, you know, a, a time ahead of us, you know, with the, the age group, group of these kids. They're going to be better and better and better each year, but it doesn't just happen. It's, it's a whole club um, uh, build every single year. They've got to go back to the drawing board. So last question for you. You're a coach. What are you doing now when we start training again? Right now they're partying. Of course they're partying, but coaches have got one eye on the future, all right? Is there any area we need to, to, to shore up? Do we get players in? You know well what's out there. Have you got any thoughts on that at this early stage? Oh, I think it's going to come from the guys who missed out. Um, your Jaden Hunts. Um, Tomlinson. You know, uh, yeah, Tomlinson coming back from injury. Yeah, correct. Yes. Sam Wiedemann. If yep. I was Sam Wiedemann, I would have been watching that game going, I want Ben Brown's spot or Tom That's McDonald's great, yeah. spot. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, if I was those boys and the coaches, um, which uh, no doubt they would have already been doing it, those boys should be super keen to get involved in this. So if we're talking about, geez, these guys are going to be around for, you know, playing finals for the next two, three, four years, I want to be a part of that. What do I need to do? I didn't play mm. um, Chandler. Um, you know, there's a lot of depth at the footy club. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and, and those guys that did, that were in the 22 or the 23, will be looking at and going, gee, if I don't do A, B and C and work my backside off over the preseason, um, yeah. you know, Jaden Hunt's going to come in and take my spot or Sam yeah. Wiedemann's going to take my spot. So yeah, good point. I think it needs to start with those depth, uh, the guys that missed out. Yep. Um, and you know, healthy competition and keeping everyone honest. 100%. Kimberly Crosswell just said, if only Robbo would have kicked like Fritter in the 2000 <laughs> grand final, maybe we would have won. Well, hang on a second. Let's just, just unpack that for a second, Kimberly. Uh, I was a young kid, probably spending most of the time on the bench in that game, and I actually slotted my shots what I had. The ball probably wasn't coming in. Uh, to our forward line that day, like the ball was coming into our forward line uh, the other night. So you can get stuff with that one. And the person that didn't kick straight, David, uh, uh, Daniel Ward was? David Neitz. Cost David us a Neitz. grand final. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Go back and watch the game. Yeah, it was Neitz's fault we lost the grand final. And that's yeah. that's widely known. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't – He do, literally, um, he doesn't like us saying this, but he did. He cost us a medal. <laughs> Uh, and I tell him every time, and he hates it. <laughs> bit of fun, bit of fun. We love it. Bit of fun. Forty, that's been brilliant, mate. I wanted to get someone's reflection straight away, and I knew you would have some pretty astute ones when it came to, to game plan and what we saw uh, on the telly the other night. There were some great moves by some coaches out there. There were some great moves by players. It wasn't just Petrarca. It was a lot of stuff, and we're going to unpack it all week long. I'm going to get a lot of my uh, teammates on this call. In fact, I might get – get towards Friday and have like a bit of a panel set up. So I'll get you back on, mate, because you're always great for a bit of banter. We might get Brand, Brown Dog on. He's always up for a chat. We won't get Granny on because he'll have no absolutely no idea. We'll leave him to to run the board. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, mate, um, you know, what an amazing night. Um, you, you, what, lastly, before I let you go, what was, the, what was the family doing? Were you jumping around the TV? Was there beers flowing? What was it? Yeah, we were. I've got two daughters, one 15 and one 9, and I've got a bit of a reputation, as you know, Robbo, for being someone who's quite angry yes, um, and gets frustrated at times. The redhead. And I, I saw that during the second quarter. I saw that in my 9-year-old daughter, Autumn. So um, 
it was a real eye opener that um, yeah. we were going to have some issues with her later in life. But um, <laughs> that was it was awesome. We uh, we had a ball, um, and like I said, got to share it. You yeah. know, only by phone, but got to share it with some some mates and ex teammates. So look forward look forward to our walk on Friday, mate, and then yes. Uh, yes, look forward to when we can catch up and have a beer in person. That'd be brilliant. And I, can I vouch for your daughter? Uh, Autumn, she's an absolute ripper. When she was a, a bit younger, it was probably about three or four years ago when she was probably what, about five, four or something like that. She's pumping around uh, pumping around the net, the, the netball best and fairest night that we had a day for you with for your daughter. And she's just walking around with a little friend. And they go into the toilet and I'm sitting there on the phone and she comes out of the toilet and she looks to a friend and she says, I just farted. <laughs> <laughs> and a friend goes, yeah, I heard that. <laughs> it was the most beautiful. Long, mate. She is. There's no filter. It was beautiful. It was no, on you, no, honest. No. Was genuine. And I just yeah. in that moment, I'm like, I love you. You're your father's daughter. <laughs> yeah, no, she's definitely my kid. No worries. <laughs> uh, mate, that's been brilliant. Um, you know, one day I'll get you back to walk down memory lane and talk about our era. But right now, it's all about the present. It's about 2021, and I wonder amazing night it was for all of us as supporters and they really do love hearing uh, from our past players. You're one of those, mate, and that's been great. Thank you very much for your time, Saucehead. 